Nothing like the slam of a screen door to wake you up in the morning. Just kidding, that didn't wake me up. I need coffee. My little baby dog is my alarm clock most mornings. He's being bad. I come out here, take him out, and uh, generally take a quick walk around, check on everything, and go back in and make my coffee. Hello, babies. Ready for your breakfast? I'll go get it. Hey, Mama. We are loving all of y'all's suggestions for our goat cart team um, that are in there with their mommy. So we will be announcing what we pick for their name soon. We haven't decided yet. We've got so many good suggestions. It's been really hard. Mayhem and Nestle are, um, if I had to pick two favorite goats, it would be them. But don't tell the other ones. Hey, Soph. Good morning, Journey Pig. So you haven't seen much of my chickens um, lately because they're in this very temporary situation. We usually free range our chickens and um, they've been in that coop which has access to this whole backyard area but um, there's a lot of compromising places in the fences where they could go under and under the gates so they just ended up you know wherever they wanted to be which included the garden you know the garage we've ended up with them in the basement they were sincerely free-range chickens. However, they stopped roosting back in the coop. They started roosting on the kids' playground. They started roosting on the back porch. Um, not only is that gross, and it means there's poop everywhere, they were getting killed. And so after losing about seven or eight of them to, you know, my puppy who's still learning, uh, learning manners around animals like that and to, you know, whatever predators were out and about at night, um, we decided to go ahead and coop them up in here until we get our new chicken coop built, which should be done here in the next couple of weeks over there near the garden. These used to be our breeding pens. On the right, we have the young chickens that are growing out and on the left, are the laying hens, which I have uh, 15 laying hens, and I think that we'll probably have another 15 to 20 once the young chicks come up. As you can see though, several of these little ones are roosters. So I'm not sure how many hens we actually have in this group. I hate having them cooped up like this though, especially when um, I'm used to free range eggs, which are a lot richer. And also, uh, it's just, it's hard to keep them clean in there. Their water gets dirty every single day. And on the plus side, um, we're actually getting to keep their eggs because that was another thing they were doing. They were just laying all over the place. And we would find clutches of eggs that at that point were useless because it's 100 degrees outside, which means it's practically an incubator. Uh, they start developing even if a hen's not sitting on them. Hey, Kitten George. Are you coming to see me? Now that my garden is fully enclosed, I'm considering moving my ducks down there. I'm a little nervous because, you know, I mean, I don't know how much damage they could cause. Most of everything's in the raised beds and the stuff that's on the ground is bigger stuff like melons. It's not like tender things or little greens. I was reading about using ducks as pest control. And I think that since they were not raised in the garden, they uh, will leave the plants alone. And I think that if I just put them a pool down there, that they'll just be happy as can be eating bugs, maybe maybe being able to help with some of the, the pests. My only concern with that, the possibility of, you know, raccoons or possums, because that is off to the side of the house. They usually sleep here in the back, which is kind of near the goat yard where Sophia is, uh, the guardian dog. So I, the reason I haven't put them over there yet is because I want to be sure that they're safe. I'm not 100% sure that they will be. All right, I'm taking my quick look around at everything. Now it's time to make coffee. Come on, babe.
During the spring and summer, when it comes to breakfasts, I tend to err on the side of easy. Um, because I generally am outside before 7 every morning until like 10.30 or 11, I just don't, um, I don't do much as far as cooking through the winter. We eat really big breakfasts. We eat a lot of hash and eggs and all that sort of thing. But um, in, in the summer, uh, it's cold cereal or oatmeal most of the time. However, today, um, I'm not doing any projects outside. I did a lot of work in the garden yesterday evening, so it's pretty squared away. I don't feel like I need to get down there. It rained last night, so I don't have to water it or anything. So this morning, I'm gonna make my kids Dutch baby pancakes, which is one of their favorite things to eat for breakfast. Uh, Dutch baby pancakes are one of my favorite things to make um, with our fresh eggs. It's similar to like a souffle, because they rise and then fall. However, it is with great, great fear and trepidation that I use Fruity Ranch eggs in the summer. It's not so bad now that we have our chickens pinned up, but this is a clutch of eggs that we found when they were free ranging. I mean, we just pinned them up a few days ago. And all it takes is cracking in to one bad egg before you're like, fearful of it for the rest of your life. So I'm gonna float these. Um, this is a trick to see how fresh your eggs are and we'll see if these are okay. Now this doesn't always guarantee that you're not going to crack into one that's developing, but if it is rotten, they float to the top when you put them in water. This is just a pot that was in the sink. It's not, it's not super clean or anything. A really fresh egg will completely sink. A, a rotten egg will float and one that's kind of like needs to be used right away, it'll stand up on its tip like this. What happens is as eggs age, they develop like an air cell in here. So they get more air inside the shell. So when they're old, they'll float to the top because they have all that air. These, these look to be pretty fresh. I'm really nervous about them though because they could still have like veins in them. I'll, I'll only toss them when they actually float to the top. Check that pretty egg out. Speckly. What? What'd you say? Can I help? Yeah, you can help. Go get a stool. Well, the basic recipe of Dutch Baby Pancakes is three eggs, a half a cup of flour, a half a cup of milk, a quarter cup of sugar, um, and then a splash of vanilla and a little bit of nutmeg. Three. Three. <laughs> I will, however, type that out down in the show notes so that you can reference it if you want to make these at home. I'm gonna preheat my oven to 425. I actually crack um, all the eggs, even though I have floated them. I crack them into a bowl first. That comes from once I was making breakfast for all of our family and all of our extended family. And I had about 40 eggs cracked into a big bowl. I was making a big old pot of scrambled eggs. And literally the last egg I was cracking was rotten. And I cracked a rotten egg into 40 other eggs. So it wasted all of them. So now, um, in order to not risk any ingredients, just on the off chance, that's actually the only rotten egg I've ever had in four and a half years of having chickens. One. Mommy. But it'll mess you up, ma'am. I don't take that risk anymore. I can do it by myself. Half a cup of flour. Half a cup of milk. That's so cool. So that's our raw goat's milk from our goats. But obviously you could use whatever milk you had. Quarter cup of sugar and a splash of vanilla. I'm gonna pour this now. Um, I make our vanilla by putting uh, vanilla beans in vodka. So it's a lot cheaper. We get vanilla beans on Amazon bulk. Um, I've had this in same bottle for four years, I think. And occasionally I just refill it with vodka. So the, a lot of these beans have been in here for a really long time, but I just add new beans occasionally and uh, more vodka. Let's shake a little nutmeg in there. What do you think? I'm gonna do that. Okay. It's <laughs> and a pinch of salt. Okay. Okay. Little one and blend it. 
If I think about it, I will put this butter in beforehand and just stick it in the oven and let it heat up that way, but I didn't, so I'm gonna turn the burner on underneath it. We just wanna melt this butter. It's melted, we'll pour this in. I'm gonna stick it in the oven and set a timer for 15 minutes. It may take a little bit more than that, but that's when I like to check it. Okay, here is our pancake right out of the oven. I'm gonna dot it with some butter and put a little bit more sugar on top of it and um, some fruit. Now you can uh, you can forego putting sugar in it if you're wanting to do less. This is kind of a treat for the kids, so I don't mind it having some in there. I have just had one of the most exciting phone calls, like ever. So yesterday, um, I woke up and was lying in bed, still checked my email. And I had a message from Baker Creek. And when I read it, there may have been dancing, but I didn't want to tell you guys about it until everything was nailed down. Now I can uh, excitedly tell you that I will be um, a speaker at the Baker Creek National Seed Expo in Santa Rosa, California this September. I just, I don't know. I don't have words yet to quite encapsulate the amount of excitement that I'm feeling about this. I am freaking out a little bit. I've cried. Um, I just, I can't believe it. Honestly, I'm, I'm still in this place of like total shock as just the blessings of all of this are being poured out. Um, we built this garden because I, I, I wanted to enjoy gardening um, I wanted to grow food but in sharing it with all of you guys and just sharing it it has brought um, just joy on joy on joy so thank you guys and um, I can't wait to share the seed expo with you guys too I am going to get to work so thank you all for watching until next time